Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be looking at uh, hazard ratios, which are one example of intervention effect measures. I'm going to be telling you a bit about them and how you can implement them in your Markov models. So hazard ratios are a common measure of effectiveness, particularly uh, from survival data. Generally, the event that we're looking at is something that we want to avoid, such as death or disease progression. So having a hazard ratio less than one is good because it means you have a lower rate of that event. Unless the hazard ratio has been given as a function of time, which is pretty unusual, this means that a proportional hazards assumption is being made. Well, what's a proportional hazards assumption? Here I've got two graphs. On the left, we have uh, survival curves where the proportional hazards assumption is met. And on the right, we have a graph where the proportional hazards assumption is not met. So if you were to, to chart the hazard ratio between these two curves, it would be constant over time on the left. Whereas on this one, you'd have a hazard ratio which would initially be low and then would rise over time. And a key indication that you have non-proportional hazards is what's happening here, which is crossing of the survival curves. Okay. But it's not necessarily very easy to just look at these survival curves and tell whether proportional hazards is a reasonable assumption. So there are some other ways that you can look at it. One of them is to use something called a Weibull plot. In a Weibull plot, we plot on the y-axis, um, the cumulative hazard on a log scale. So that's if you want to calculate it from the survival data, you take the log of the survival, then you take the negative of that, and then you take the log a second time. And on the x-axis, we plot time, but again, it's on a log scale. Um, I've said here for two groups. In this case, we actually have three groups, but you will quite often only have two. And if the lines that you get on this plot are similar apart from some amount of vertical shifting, then proportional hazards is reasonable. And that's because if your cumulative hazard is multiplied by the same number over time, then the log cumulative hazard is just shifted by a constant over that period of time. And if the lines are straight on that plot, it also suggests that a Weibull model is a good fit. Now, um, in this example on the right, you can see that these lines aren't exactly straight. They're definitely kind of tailing off as we get towards longer time period. So probably suggesting that in this case, a Weibull model might not be very good. But at least from this point on, which is, I guess, about four months, proportional hazards looks like a very good assumption. This curve is almost exactly these curves shifted down a tiny bit. It's all a bit of a mess here on the left. Um, and that's an example where perhaps in your model you use empirical data, um, empirical Kaplan-Meier curves, rather than trying to have some parametric model like a Weibull model or a Gompertz model. Another way you can check the proportional hazard assumption is by using something called the Schoenfields residuals. And I would basically encourage you to just look this up. You can search online for test proportional hazards assumption, and this will be one of the things that gets shown to you. Um, when you plot them against time, they should give you an approximately horizontal line if there are proportional hazards. So here we do have uh, an approximately a horizontal line. Uh, so proportional hazards, this is the same data that we had on the previous slide. So unsurprisingly, also suggesting proportional hazards is reasonable for that data set. So where do we actually get the hazard ratios from out of those data? They'll typically come from a Cox proportional hazards regression, which makes no assumptions about the baseline hazard function, or some kind of parametric survival regression, typically using a Weibull distribution or a Gompertz distribution because those actually have proportional hazards um, parameterization. 
and the exponential distribution is just a special case of the Weibull distribution. You sometimes also get hazard ratios from uh, non-parametric regressions which are using splines but in in the literature you'll generally see them coming from Cox proportional hazards regression. Sometimes you'll also get a study where they estimate incidence rates in different arms and then calculate an incidence rate ratio. Now if you assumed there was a constant incidence rate over time that would also be the hazard ratio. I've been asked in the past how do you go and use a hazard ratio in your Markov model um, and it's pretty simple you multiply the baseline hazard rate by the hazard ratio and I would generally suggest that you work with hazard rates and cumulative hazards and only convert to transition probabilities at the last minute when you really actually need them and then when you convert to transition probabilities you can account for competing risks and I had a previous video on cycle lengths where you can see how that is done. But if for some reason you really only have transition probabilities and you can't work with the rates, um, you can take one minus the risk so that you now have the probability of the event not happening. You raise that to the power of the hazard ratio and then you subtract the result of that from one to get back to the revised risk with the hazard ratio applied. So as a formula, that looks like this. Okay, thanks for watching.